<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bun Yellow. Yes. Bruce. Also, cough, cough. This is the beginning. <laughs> Let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and trustworthy and some third thing at my local bookstore for over 16 years. That's yep. a long time. That and as very such, long time. My, my bookstore career is so old that it's sending nudes. <laughs> it's like it's like sexting and listening to strange music. So as such, I really do have my skeletal fingers on the pulse of the ever dying book world. And I am here. To throttle your brain with my skeletal fingers with this week's woefully wonderful installment of Notes from the Bookstore. <laughs> In this week, I would I would like, if I may, I'd like to get real with you guys. Yeah. I'd like to get real. Really real. Or yeah as real as we can get in a segment that we legally have to repeatedly state is entirely fictional. <laughs> okay. I'm going to state that again. Entirely fictional. And that is to cover my ass. But I want to get real with you. Uh-huh. Really real. So real that if I were a substitute teacher... I'd be arriving in a leather jacket to teach inner city youth about the similarities between Jay-Z and Shakespeare. That kind of real. Yes. I want to get so real that if I were a Christian youth minister, I'd be sitting backwards on a chair and saying, hey, I just want to rap with you kids for a second. <laughs> that kind of real. Mm-hmm. I want to get so real with you guys that if I were a basic white father, I would be turning my baseball cap backwards and saying, Lingo, I'm way too old to say. So it's that kind of real. Yes. We talk a lot about books here, about books and authors and book trends and junk with a wee bit about the behind the scenes life of work at a bookstore. But let's get real about that. I want to drop some truth on you right now. Uh -oh. You want to know? You want to know what it's like? to work at a bookstore well for starters most of the time you actually don't work at a bookstore if you work at a bookstore you usually don't work at a bookstore okay. most of the time you work at a public bathroom that occasionally sells books <laughs> Most of the time you work at a study hall for pretentious Instagramming college students that occasionally sells books. Mm -hmm. Most of the time you work at America's number one home for angry, entitled old white people and secret creepy perverts that occasionally sells books. Mm -hmm. And if you've never wiped an eight-year-old's vomit off of a Thomas the Tank Engine table then have fun <laughs> you're gonna be uh charting some new ground you're gonna be learning some exciting new things about yourself in your new job as a bookseller here's some painful truths for you okay people only, people only want to read a book nowadays because of some reason other than they like to read Okay. Ninety percent of the time, people only want a book because of some new movie that's that is out, or some new movie that's about to come out, or a TV show, or there's a review in a magazine, or Oprah sneezed, and the sound of the sneeze sounded an awful lot like a book. Mm -hmm. Like Oprah just sneezes. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, uh. So suddenly everyone's like, uh, Oprah sneezed the winter of our discontent. Is that a book? I need that, I need that book that Oprah sneezed. People just don't read that much nowadays. And that's why we're really more of a toy store than a bookstore nowadays. Sometimes it feels that we're a Funko Pops and 1000 piece puzzle store. Really? We are. Yeah. A lot more than we are a GD bookstore. And here's another painful truth for you. People are crazy ass rude nowadays. Yeah. So much ruder than they were before. Thanks, Internet. <laughs> because 8, 10, 12, 15 years ago, people would actually come up to you and ask you questions. And usually they'd be polite, like, excuse me, you work here, right? I see your name tag. Yes, I'm sorry. I don't mean to bother you, but I'm looking for this book. And I was wondering if you could if you could help me find it. Can you do that for me? You can. Thank you. Thank you very much. I need this for school. Oh, I don't and know if I believe that. No, people, most people were very polite, but now people just bark titles and bark sections and bark authors at you. Nowadays, people don't ask, excuse me, can you help me? They're just, John Grisham! John Grisham, where's John Grisham? See, I don't know, though. See, see, I kind of remember back being younger, in 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 my hanging out in bookstore days, ah, yes, um, yes. where where it seemed more polite to ask that way because they were very big, especially since where I was, if you wanted a bookstore, you had to go to a friggin' mall, yeah. you know. So yeah. like people were in and out constantly, and they were always having to do shit. So so it seemed to me to just be like. You know, I mean, I would smile at you and try to make eye contact, but I, I would put my request as brief as possible, so I'm just out of your face. Yeah. But people are people are a bit more rude about it. Yeah. Now than they were back then. Now it's just travel. Like even just a monosyllabic scream of Tell me what I need. The worst, the absolute worst, yeah. though, is when they have a picture of the book that they need on their phone. Mm -hmm. So they literally just shove their phone in your face. Oh, God. You have this? And they shove their phone, their phone that was just seconds ago in their back pocket up against their sweaty butt. And now it's in your face. Mm-hmm. That happens all the time now, and it sucks. Yeah. For reals. It basically boils down to not just working at a bookstore, but just working in retail in general. People are ruder yeah. now than they were before. I personally blame both the internet and Guy Fieri. <laughs> I blame the internet because it's most definitely 110% entirely the internet's fault. And I also blame Guy Fieri because he's a McDouche nugget. Yes. And it's fun to blame him for things. Really fun. For example, Bunny, why don't you take a moment and blame Guy Fieri for something? I blame... Sorry, she panicked me. I I blame Guy Fieri for that right there. Exactly. That it's was all. That, that was all Guy Fieri's fault. Okay. It's obvious. So, that Guy so Fieri like got I was thinking head. about goddamn Guy Fieri. So I think I completely mis misread whatever was going on with Jeannie, and that's all Guy Fieri's friggin' fault. Exactly. Spike he is motherfucker. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. He he's he's easily blamable, so it's just fun. Mm -hmm. So, in in other book news, or I should say bookstore news, because as I've said before, Bunny, we call ourselves booksellers, but a massive percentage of our sales comes from non-book related items like games and puzzles yeah. and toys and dolls. 
Did you know, Bunny, that be- Beanie Babies are still a freaking thing? No. No, I didn't. Yes, yeah, they're still a thing. Of course, of course, it's not really Beanie Babies per se, but since that crazy time in U.S. history where people actually thought that Beanie Babies could be more valuable than gold. Yes. The Thai plush doll company has been releasing a number of different itinerations of Beanie Babies. Yeah. So they've been getting the Beanie Babies and trying to change them in a way to try and capture the public uh, zeitgeist again. So they did uh, character-driven beanies where they got the rights to, like, Hanna-Barbera characters and Nickelodeon characters and released them as Beanie Babies. That sounds vaguely familiar. They released a series of animal Beanie Babies, and and they had a very popular line called Beanie Boos, which are basically different animal plush but with giant-ass Disney-sized eyes. Yeah. And those became pretty popular. It got to the point where I'd be getting calls from like eleven year old girls. Hi, can you tell me can you tell me which beanie boos you have right now? And I'm like, okay. It's giving me flashbacks to nineteen ninety nine. But sure, let me tell you what beanie boos we have in stock right now. <laughs> oh, so you haven't gotten you haven't gotten the red fox yet? Okay. When do you expect the red fox at beanie boo in? So that gave me some flashbacks. And now there's a new line of Thai dolls. Okay, okay. We're not talking yes. Sanford and Son, are we? Sanford and Son? Went no. Because that was Red Fox. No, 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 no. No, a, an actual Red Fox. Because a Red Fox red. beanie baby would be pretty frightening. And probably pretty rare, too. But yeah. keep that in mind. We are going to be talking about uh, Sanford and Sons later. Oh, okay. When we, when we get to the homework assignment, there's going to be some Sanford and Sons there. So keep Sanford and Sons in mind. So now okay. there's a new now there's a new tie doll that they're selling, and they're called Teeny Ties. And basically, these ones are just Beanie Boos, but shoved into a small tiny ball like the disney's uh zoom zoom line uh they're they're like a i don't know like a tiny egg shaped beanie boo basically yeah and these freaking teeny ties are selling like mad selling like crazy (laughs) selling more than you would think we were selling out of teeny ties really yeah, and then then they said, "Oh, we're gonna have to get rid of this uh, display of teeny ties because we're all sold out." And then the corporate the the corporate suits came down and said, "Don't get rid of your teeny ties. We're sending you more teeny ties. Leave the empty display as a warning to the others." No. Oh. So yeah, we got more teeny ties, and they're selling like mad, and it's it, it's weird, and it's giving me flashbacks, giving me flashbacks hard. Yeah. Giving me hard flashbacks to that weird period in time. One thing that I do say all that I, time I you, a lot of all that time you spent in that tiger cage. Yeah. Yeah. One shot. Getting, One shot. Yeah. 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 I, I I was held in the same in the same type of pen that they used to keep John McCain. Yes. Did you ever so, get his watch out of your ass? I, no, it's still it's stuck in there somewhere. I take a lot of supplements, so <laughs> I take and, a lot of and, and every hour you do the Westminster chime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I fart like a once once on the top of every hour. My farts like an air horn. <laughs> Like, I do regular farts, and then at the beginning of every hour, like, <laughs> oh, it must be three o'clock. That's the three o'clock Steve. Is it lunchtime already? Wow. But I use a lot of dolls in my story times, and, you know, a lot of creatures appear. I wrestle a lot of dinosaurs and dragons and stuff, and every once in a while, if I use a a beanie boo or something like that. I, I say, kids, this is a beanie boo 
which is a version of a Beanie Baby. And if you don't know what Beanie Babies are, Beanie Babies are a type of doll, and there's a 60% chance that one of you had a parent that went insane for them in the 90s. <laughs> Seriously, ask your mom or dad, but really, ask your mom if she or or if her aunt yeah. went nuts for Beanie Babies in the 90s. The answer may surprise you. And how did that even happen? There would have to be a plot somewhere to have made that happen. I actually read a book about it. I read a book about the rise and fall of Beanie Babies. It was a business book. And it was about the 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 rise and fall of the guy who created Beanie Babies. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's like under house arrest now for like some sort of fraud. <laughs> But yeah, there was a period in time when there were like magazines and they were talking about your important Beanie Baby investment and how in 20 years they will be worth however many millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Like people really did think that the price of Beanie Babies were rising so much that eventually Beanie Babies will outperform gold. Yeah. And that and that I like remember I remember that, hearing that somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, Fort Knox suddenly becomes the fluffiest fort yeah. in American history because it's just filled with Beanie Babies now. But like, what what sparked that though? See, like like you know, like Cabbage Patch dolls or Power Ranger dolls, uh, Tickle Me Elmo, the original Star Wars toys. A lot of them got their popularity by being being in shortage at the time and you couldn't get them and they would be yeah. fighting over them. beanie babies is more kind of like invasion of the body snatchers you know they yeah. just sort of pass from town to town the reason absorbing the reason, you the reason why beanie babies happened the way that they did is number one the the guy in charge of the Thai Beanie Baby Company said, I do not want Beanie Babies in any big box chain. So these Beanie Babies, you're not going to find them at Walmart, Target, Kmart, Toys R Us. They're going to be in small, locally owned mom and pop stores, card stores, Hallmark stores. You're not going to oh, find yeah, these yeah. in a big store, number one. And number two, hey, this one that we're making, we're only making a limited amount of them. <laughs> and then and then like the the people who who stocked these beanie babies would say, but wait, why are you making a small amount of these? And he'd say, hey, shut up and sell what we give you. <laughs> so then eventually the collected the people who would buy these would go, wait a second. They only made however many of these. OK, I'm going to get my hands on those. And another reason why Ty the beanie babies went crazy is because of eBay. Yeah. Because eBay was like, we we have this website, and this website's going to be the number one place where you can purchase, where you can buy, sell, or trade socks or some <laughs> stupid thing. And it wasn't doing good. And then it said, oh, man, this website's not doing good. I guess people aren't going to know what eBay is. Oh, what do you want to sell on our website? Beanie Babies? Yeah, sure. Whatever. It's not like people care about Beanie Babies. <laughs> And so yeah. eBay, eBay became successful at first solely because of Beanie Babies. <laughs> and, and that is true. eBay was built on, on a pile of dead Beanie Babies. <laughs> and like nobody knows that except for like a few people. So now every time I look at eBay, I'm like, I don't trust you. I don't trust any place <laughs> that got its start from freaking Beanie Babies. Mm -hmm. No, eBay. Bad website. Somehow, somehow evil. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, any, anything that cute, I have a hard time trusting. They're up to yeah. something. Yeah. So, so here's a story. Here's a story for you. This is a 100% true story in a fake, uh, uh, 
part of the show. So here's a story. I did a field trip recently. Yeah. And it was a field trip where I did a tour around the store Mm -hmm. for a bunch of kids. They were low income kids and they had never been into a bookstore before. And they were 11 to 14 years old. And there were about 20 of them. And uh, I was supposed to give them a store tour. And and I'm really good at getting people to like me. Like, I can change my nature, my demeanor to try and match whatever situation I'm in. What I'm saying is you put me in a room with a bunch of uh, rednecks listening to country music, and I can get along with them. Mm Mm-hmm. By changing who I am. Mm-hmm. I change who I am very well. Good. So, like, it is, I'm at it a is bar. an important skill. Yeah. I'm at a bar. I can get along with the people at, a, at the bar. You, I go to church. I can get along really great with all of those freaking church people. Yeah. And you, you have me do a tour for a bunch of teen and preteen kids, and I can get along with them. And I really did get along with them really well and by the yeah. end of the tour the kids were like coming up to me oh hey mr steve hey mr steve thank you for that tour that was really funny hey can you help me find this book and one kid one of the teens and he was about i would say 12 or 13 yeah comes up to me afterwards he goes hey mr steve that tour is really funny you're pretty cool hey can you help me find a book because they were all buying a book a, because they had a, a book fair and they earned a lot of money so all of these kids were getting to buy one book at the bookstore and i said sure what book are you looking for is there a specific book and he goes no do you have any books on fidget spinners books on fidget that spinners said. that is it that is exactly what he said he asked if we had any books on fidget spinners now my big question is i've thought about this a lot and my big question my number one question is yeah what did he think that book would be? I like, I want to find that kid again. Like if I had like a take two, I would be like, wait, you came to this bookstore expecting to find a book on fidget spinners. So in your mind, you have a sort of picture of what that book would be. So what do you think that book would be? Is it just going to be pictures of different things that spin? (laughs) <laughs> is it going to be a price guide like they used to sell for Beanie Babies? Like, what What do you think this yeah. book is going to be? I, I, I'm thinking a lot of pictures. Now, I, of course, it could not be real, but a lot of pictures of different fidget spinners, kind of like Hot Wheel cars, is yeah. what I'm thinking of. <clears throat> yeah, like an antiques uh, collectible price guide sort of thing. Yeah, fidget spinners that have flames on the side. So and there would have to be a camouflage fidget yeah. spinner. And girl ones too. Don't forget yeah. girl ones. Yeah. And yeah. Purple and flowers and unicorns. And then there's the rainbow ones for the for the gay kids. Yeah. For the gay kids. Spin them and they ooh rainbow colors. <laughs> you should you just. I just want. I, when you get high. Yeah. I just want to take this time to 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 condemn what Jeannie just said. I <laughs> I just want to take this time to say that I and really this entire mm. podcast we are against spinning gay kids. <laughs> no, we do not condone grabbing gay children and spinning them around. It'd be really cute though, yeah, wouldn't not, it? That is not good. You don't. You really do not cute. want gay kids vomiting all over the place. Oh. <laughs> good point. Good point. I just clean that they, floor. But do they spew rainbow vomit? I do not know. That I do not know. Well, <laughs> see, that's why we need to do it. Well, that's Hello? right. It's, it's, science, it's science. Yes. Yeah. And we're so all funny. about the science. Yes. Here's my idea. Okay. Okay. We write a series of adventure books about a fidget spinner who leaves his small town and goes into the magic forest to find the jewel that will defeat the evil dragon. Okay. 
fidget spinner fiction for kids. Mm. Fidget spinner. If and, Pac-Man and, could have and, a cartoon. Hey, and maybe yeah. it could be one of those build your own adventure kind of books. Yeah, yeah. Really? Fidget spinner and the rise of the evil dark lord book one. Oh my god, this is so forest. written by a man. Into I swear to yeah. god. Yeah, that just wrote itself. Yeah. You're you such start a guy. Fidget spinner fiction for kids. Boom. Million dollars. Mm-hmm. Another one of my million dollar ideas. Verbal copyright. 2017. The pop on film. Except any of the illustrations in the book yeah. would have to be like that kind of Lord of the Rings sort of line art type of thing. Yeah. Watercolor. Yeah. Except for our hero, the fidget spinner, which is just a cut out photograph. Yeah. So I have yeah. a question. How does this fidget spinner move around? He spins. He spins from place to place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, you too can save 10% on all purchases because we here at your local bookstore are just really big Bono fans. Yes. So you too gets 10% off all their purchases, no matter what store they go to, which is nice because <laughs> we're vicariously helping Africa yes. by giving you two a discount. So we're kind of heroes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of vicariously. Africa just and- always looks really dusty to me. Yeah, it, it's probably dusty because um, they just need to find more bald people. So, you know, so sending all the food and the medical supplies and the, you know, all the aid that we send to uh, developing African nations only for warlords to get them. Maybe we should start sending them Swiffers. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe just some Clorox uh, disinfecting wipes. Yeah, if they can, if they can, you know, kick it back. If you just kick it back a little, you know, if you just can get a handle on the dust situation, you know, yeah. I'm I'm thinking, you know, Africa could probably clean up pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. We're gonna help them out. Bunch of bunch of Swiffer dusters, mm-hmm. Swiffer dusters to Africa. Yes. That's that's gonna be our new. That's gonna be our new organization for Ethiopia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. 